back to the pressure of the playoffs. When the only colors you see are black and blue. That is, if you can see it all. How do you react when you execute your best laid plans? Only to see a rookie virtually foil them. Or when a man resembles monster. What you do is what you have to do. Even if it's not normally what you do best. Your veterans draw on experience to douse the fire. And maybe even light one of their own. And in the guts of the game, with the lights up and the pressure even higher, you soar to your highest heights. They spread the floor for Iguodala against Turkaloo. Andre Iguodala for the lead. Yes! Oh, yes! Andre Iguodala has done it again! Welcome back to the NBA Playoffs. Running down and his team spade in his hands, Andre Iguodala became the man. With the flick of a wrist, the Sixers took a slender two-point lead in game one. But there was still work to be done. In the end, Hito Turkoglu ending a miserable game in misery. His shot no good in the Sixers' cap, an unlikely comeback to stun the Magic. After two days to think about it, the teams return to Amway Arena. Comcast Sports Air presents in high definition game two of this opening round. Best of seven series between the 76ers and the Orlando Magic. Good evening to you and welcome back to the 2009 NBA playoffs here on Comcast Sportsnet. I'm Mark Zumoff. Ask yourself this, are the Sixers greedy enough? Do they dare win tonight as well and take a commanding 2-0 lead in this best of seven series? While you ponder that, let's go back and look at this. This is what they did in game one. They came back. They were down as many as 18 late in the third. They were down 14 after three, a magnificent fourth quarter in which they outscored the Magic by 16 to win by a deuce. Bob Salmi, you can think of at least four reasons why the Sixers won game one. I certainly can. And we talked about the 76ers, in order to win game one, would have to get contributions across the board scoring the basketball. And that's exactly what they did in game one. A little magic of their own, if you will. Andre Iguodala, Andre Miller, Thaddeus Young, and Lou Williams all contributed from a scoring standpoint. And the two Andres contributed making plays and rebounding the basketball for the Philadelphia 76ers. But it all starts with the Sixers' best player. It starts with Andre Iguodala. How about his recognition? 76ers struggling on the break, takes matters into his own hand, rebounds the ball and goes coast to coast for two of the nine 76 or fast break points. Andre Iguodala aggressive offensively in game one. Andre Miller, quite frankly, was Andre Miller. Recognizing what's needed to be done, does it, gets himself to the rim and lays the ball up at a key moment in the game for the 76ers. Thaddeus Young showed he was able to make plays, showed that he has veteran in him, getting himself to the rim, getting three-point plays. Lou Williams, a big night. Alley-oop passes for him, three for three from three. How about this recipe for success for the 76ers? Take four veteran players scoring, sprinkle in a little Daniel Marshall, 76ers lead the series one game to nothing. I've had a lot of Daniel Marshall in the fourth quarter of game one. D-line him with more on a 35-year-old, looking like he's 25. You know, after that game one win, I ran into team president N. Stefanski, and I said, given the contributions we just saw from Theo Ratliff and Danielle Marshall, you must be really proud how you found a way to fill out the roster last summer. Ed smiled, and he said, I think it's worked out well. Marshall played 11-plus minutes, finished with 11 points. He entered the game to start the fourth quarter with the Sixers down 14. He was 4-5 or five from the floor with three made threes. He made his first three with just under nine minutes to play, and then his teammates fed off of him. They scored the next eight. He would drop another three before hitting that runner in the lane at, with two minutes to play. And then, of course, the biggie. Theo Ratliff, the offensive rebound. Danielle Marshall tied the game with that three-pointer. Marshall knows his role on this team. He says, they turned to me in desperate scoring times. At this morning's shoot-around, he said he was hopeful. He doesn't have to have an encore performance because that would mean the regular rotation was doing just fine, Mark. 
All right, D, thank you so much. Tonight, a marvelous opportunity for the 76ers. Come into hostile territory yet again and pull out a win. No doubt the Magic will come out with all they can muster and then some. Join us as the Sixers look to make it two straight here in O-Town. It'll be game two, the 76ers and the Magic on Comcast Sportsnet coming up next. Seventy Sixers basketball is brought to you by Toyota, a smart way to keep moving forward. The new AT&T, your world delivered. McDonald's McCafe coffees. Try hot or ice mochas, lattes, and cappuccinos. McDonald's, I'm loving it. Wachovia, the official financial services partner of the Philadelphia 76ers. Mountain Dew, do the do, and by. Reach for the prevalence of flavor and refreshment. Budweiser, the great American lager. The Amway Arena here in Orlando, home to the Magic. There are fans filing in for tonight's game two of this first round best of seven playoff series. The Magic, the number three seed, hosting the Sixers, the number six seed. The starters brought to you by Wachovia. Andre Godala with Fanny is showing the forward. Samuel D'Alembert in the middle. Willie Green and Andre Miller, the guards. And for Tony DeLeo, a couple of practices, including a hard, upbeat one yesterday. He would love for his team to get greedy and go up 2-0 in this best-of-seven first-round series. Starters for the Orlando Magic. You know, Turkaloo, Rashard Lewis, look for those guys to try to get their three-point shots off. At a more rapid clip tonight. Dwight Howard in the middle with Courtney Lee, the rookie, who played so well in game one. And Rafer Alston for the injured Jameer Nelson. Stan Van Gundy complaining of his team's lack of urgency in game one. And once again, expect increased looks from the likes of Lewis and Turkaloo. They're terrific three-point shooters. So tonight here at Amway Arena, Elanum, Oksami, Mark Sumov covering all the action right here on Comcast Sportsnet. With more, let's turn our attention to D. Well, Mark, playoff basketball, we all know, gets a little more physical, often more of a half-court game. The guys in stripes let guys play it out. In game one, there were a couple of incidents where guys took hard hits. In the first half, Andre Miller got hit hard in traffic. He came up holding that right hand. Obviously, he played throughout the rest of that game. It certainly bothered him at the time. And then Samuel Dellenbear in the second half kind of came over top of Dwight Howard. It looked like he had hit him on the head, but he also caught him in the right eye. Dwight Howard left the game at that point. He did return. He said he was experiencing blurry vision at that time. He did see an eye doctor in the last couple of days, but he also said there's nothing that will keep me out of game two. Mark, I think the guys who are really hurting the most are still Hidu Turkoglu and Richard Lewis. Turkoglu said if this were still the regular season, I would be on the bench healing up. And Richard Lewis said the tendonitis, not in just one knee, but now both knees, really, really does bother him. Turkoglu, a sprained left ankle. Thank you so much, T. Causing him to miss the last two games of the regular season, though he did have two full practices before that game one, and I'm told did everything the Magic normally need him to do during a full-fledged practice. Of course, Dwight Howard was a real he-man in that game one with a playoff career high 31. And Howard was hooked in that right eye by Sammy in the second half. Went to the doctors, and apparently the doctor and Howard himself proclaiming him A-OK. -okay. Let's hope 2020 vision does not translate into a 20-20 night, meaning 20 points and 20 boards for Howard, who is certainly capable of that. Of course, DeLeo would like to see his team get to the line more, but as you can see, the playoffs that much more physical, so getting the calls that much more difficult. No question, it's tougher to get to the line in the playoffs, but the Magic, a unique combination, a team that likes to shoot the three ball and still gets to the free throw line. We take a look at our keys of the game. Adjustments, both coaches have had plenty of time to study that game one, to come up with some adjustments. One of the adjustments that Tony DeLeo talked about, since the Orlando Magic know exactly what the play calls are, they have really overplayed all of the 76ers sets in half court. Tony DeLeo going over back cuts and lob passes to take advantage of those overplays from game one. So they adjust and you anticipate what they anticipate will be your adjustments. And we roll on into game two, and that's the beauty of the playoffs. This is the best of seven opening round series between the Sixers 
and the Orlando Magic. It'll be D'Alembert and Howard. And we're running tonight in this game two from Amway Arena. So happy you could join us tonight here on Comcast Sportsnet. Turkoglu on Iguodala as he was when Iguodala won the game on Sunday night. Thaddeus Young. And Howard, did he tip it? Well, it'll go as a goaltend officially. Scored two for Thaddeus Young to get us going. How about that confidence? Second time in the playoffs. Eighth playoff game for Thaddeus Young. Right-hand jump hook in the lane. Well, Young, before he injured that ankle, was on a tear, and that's where he really busted out and had some confidence. What a steal by Miller on Lewis. Great weak side help from Andre Miller. Let's see what Stan Van Gundy's trying to do. Get Lewis involved early. Get him an easy bucket. Little rub cut. Rub cut that was smelled out by Andre Miller. Each team only turned it over ten times in game one as Green coughed it up to the rookie, Lee. And Lee able to cash in at the other end. Lee in his playoff debut as a rookie on Sunday had 18 points, though he was scoreless in the fourth quarter. Again, by design, 76ers deciding that Lee and Rafer Alston were the two guys that they were going to leave open and stay connected with Turgaloo and Lewis. It's a lob for D'Alembert. Hustled down by Young. Sixers five to shoot. Miller steps in and strokes two. Game one for Andre Miller, great stats, 15 points, seven boards, seven assists, only two turnovers. Inside it goes to Howard, what a play by Miller. I mean a sensational play to double up and steal it. Andre Miller on the defensive end, two terrific plays here in the first quarter. Mr. Weak Side defense, two steals to start the game, both coming from the weak side of the floor. Andre Miller and the Sixers showing they mean business early on. Of course, they'll have to absorb what you would think would be both barrels from the Magic here. They don't want to go down 2-0. They've already lost the home court advantage as Lewis missed the three. Iguodala broke it free for Miller. Good job of gang rebounding the ball. Andre Iguodala and Samuel D'Alembert both kept it out of Howard's hands. Miller, an opportunity to take Austin, and he has his way. Beautifully done by Andre Miller. The Sixers come out here and hit three of their first four. That's a good early sign. And a whistle and a defensive three-second violation called against the Sixers. Andre Miller looking for his third steal from the weak side. It's caught in that lane a little bit too long. Again, these are the adjustments that Tony DeLeo has been talking about in practice all week. Weak side adjustments. He felt that that weak side defense was one of the reasons that Courtney Alexander and Rafer Alston were able to get all the way to the rim in those high pick and roll situations. Sixers have come out with a much better weak side rotation here in the first quarter. And Andre Miller made sure of it with two early steals, including a beautiful double down on Dwight Howard, a guy who can turn it over. Iguodala wrestling here with Lewis as they switch. Young has Turkoglu. Turkoglu leaning in, hoping for the contact. And again, it's one and done for the Magic. Very good offensive rebounding team, especially with Howard as Miller strokes the deuce. The Sixers by five early on, and Andre Miller is a man possessed. He's got two steals. He's three of three from the floor already. Both ends of the floor, Andre Miller getting it done. Talk about leadership. It's coming from Andre Miller. Green got a piece of it. Young tried to hustle it down as the Sixers are very active on the defensive end. No question. Edu Turkoglu and Rashad Lewis won three between them in game one. They've each taken a three here in the game, and it has been contested. They have not gotten an open look here early in the game. Sixers, a team that thrives on getting turnovers. They were third in that category during the regular season. Great for Austin, did have 15 in game one. Had a pair of threes, though he shot five of 15 from the floor. And Austin, just a 38.5% shooter during the regular season, and not much better for his career. But again, the plan is to leave he and Lee open at the three-point line. And, and that's stay, why, and, and that's why. And if he's going to make open shots and those two are going to beat you, you shake their hands at the end of a seven-game series and say congratulations. Green giving it up. Dallin there with a shot clock running shot down, clock. and they call a shot clock violation on the Sixers. It's interesting in talking to Tony DeLeo this week, one of the things he really focused on was how did the Sixers get down by 18? The comeback was great, but really studying those possessions that got them in that hole. Turkoglu dancing inside, and Hito Turkoglu 
at 81 percent will visit the strike. Fouled by Samuel D'Alembert, who had personal foul difficulty early in game one. Again, the foul difficulty for Samuel D'Alembert, he would like to commit his fouls on Howard. And that time, Turgaloo beats the 76ers off the dribble. Samuel D'Alembert just a step late with the rotation, commits a foul, a foul that he doesn't get to take on Dwight Howard. It's amazing numbers on Turkaloo in terms of only six points, averaging just under 17 during the regular season. Shot two of eight in game one. Missed both of his three-point attempts. And normally, between Lewis and Turkaloo, they will attempt about 11-12 a game. In fact, Lewis led the NBA in attempting threes. Think about those two in the regular season in three games versus the 76ers. Those two took 41 threes in three games against the 76ers. In the regular season, they took six in game one. Miller again wants Alston. And he's got him here all the way to the cup, and Howard there to say no. Howard, of course, led the NBA in blocks and rebounding. Got the Defensive Player of the Year award before tonight's game. Howard after it. Out of bounds it goes. Last touch by the Sixers. The Magic here left with 17 to shoot. Again, you see the 76ers transition defense. Does this hit the backboard first? Nope. Howard takes it to the board with the left hand. That is Defensive Player of the Year award prior to the game, and you can see why. One of the great block shot blockers from the weak side. Average just under three blocks per game during the season. Miller here has Turkaloo. Howard in deep. You got to deny that. D'Alembert indeed denies him by blocking his shot. Here are the black shirts. Young gives it up to Miller. Now the Sixers will set up. Quite a play by D'Alembert, snuffing Howard. Miller again got it Andre Miller's got it going on here in the first quarter at both ends he's got eight already four of five from the floor Alston again and Miller the miss solid start for the Sixers the crowd is definitely not in this game Miller again yes give it to Andre Miller until that heat check goes south five of six give him ten of the Sixers dozen points Right at Alston offensively and on the other end of the floor, a great weak side defender breaking things up. It's been the Miller show here in the first. Howard taking down there, missing the slam, and the whistles are silent. He was looking for a call, didn't get it. Iguodala for Young with Howard late to get back into the picture, and that he is able to take advantage. Of course, Stan Van Gundy wants a call, but he got none. Second time Samuel Dallenberg has stood his ground against Dwight Howard. Second time he tried to dunk on him. Sammy right there. Howard going at it again, and this time D'Alembert reached in and committed a second. Just that quickly, Sammy, two personal fouls, not even halfway through the first. And again, two on Samuel D'Alembert to this point in the game. Tony DeLeo going to get Theo Ratliff in. In from the Sixers, number 15, Theo Ratliff. Ratliff, of course, played the bulk of the minutes at the center spot anyway in game one. Going 24 at the ripe old age of 36 and none the worse for the wear. No question, but think about what the 76ers are doing in single covering Howard. Staying connected at the three-point line and making Howard make plays at the rim. They love the move here by Alston, his second bucket for five thus far their leading score. On the season, fourth on the Magic team, averaging just under 12. Miller again, count it and a foul. Andre Miller is on fire. The best shot fake in the game gets the defensive player of the year in the air. And then he steps through and finishes, takes the contact. Coming right at Alston here, Miller goes to the middle of the floor. Shot fake on Howard, then a step through. Howard gets him on the top of the head. Get it to Andre Miller and get out of his way here in the first quarter. This is leadership personified right here, I have to tell you. On both ends of the floor, Miller a couple of steals early. His benchmates love it. Andre Miller with 13, two away from what he had all of game one. Great start for Andre Miller and a great start for the 76ers in a game where you thought the Magic would come out more desperate. Absolutely, just past the halfway point of the first. Turkaloo and there's Green getting a piece of it. Again, the Sixers very active on the defensive end. We have a timeout. Stan Van Gundy in conversation with official, the head of the officials here, Steve Javi. 
the meantime, the Sixers have ripped off a 9-2 run, and right now leading it by 7 early on, just past the halfway point of the first quarter. Come run with us, the 76ers and the Orlando Magic in the 2009 NBA playoffs. Game three is Friday, free t-shirts to all fans. Game four is Sunday, rally towels for all in attendance. Tickets as low as just 15 bucks, 215-339-7676 or Sixers.com for more information. Here now the Magic out of the timeout. Green allowing Alston to shoot. Howard rips it down with Ratliff leaning on him, and Theo fouled him. Should be two at the line for Dwight Howard. But that's how quickly Howard can shed a block out. Theo Ratliff had good inside position. Sheds the block out, gets himself into position. Ratliff on the left side of your screen. Just so quick and so hard to block out. Takes the contact and gets his first two free throws of the game. But this is not a bad spot for Dwight Howard. 59% on the regular season, 9 of 12 in game one. Sixers would like to see if he can repeat that performance and would be happy if he shoots 12 more free throws in game two. Well, what they would like is if he missed a few more. That's what they would like. <laughs> well, the percentages are the percentages because they're percentages over time. You can get hot and go 9 for 12 in one game, but over an 82-game season, this big man at the line right now made 59% of his free throws and took a boatload. So he is who he is at the line, and Sixers will continue to put him there. Hito Turkoglu to the bench. And for the first time, number 20 is Michael Petrus. Sixth year from France, signed as a free agent, one of two for Howard. Magic did have five more free throws attempted in that game one. Here's Iguodala yet to attempt a shot in the game, but Miller has hauled the low that time, called for the travel as he tried to get Lee in the air. Iguodala would like to have that one back on his shot fake. His defender, Peters, fell to the floor. Iguodala didn't see it, made a play to Miller. Magic just 5 of 18 from beyond the arc in game one. So the Sixers strategy working to perfection. Here's Lewis posting Miller and Andre rarely gets ground to anybody. There's Young sifting in and again great help defense by the Sixers. If not getting steals getting hands on balls. No question deflecting passes and look who they're doubling off of. Courtney Lee is going to be open the entire game. Sixers switch the first pick and then help from the top off Lee. It's Lee and Austin at the 76ers are going to make beat them. Two to shoot. It's got to be Lee. That's for a three. Rebound away get out. Andre Godala, magnificent stats in that game one, 20 points, eight boards, eight assists, and late in the game going after and seemingly snatching every important rebound. Here's Miller again, this time he's got the taller Lee on him. And Andre Godala says, Miller, you're the hot guy. Over the top, Over the top it goes and out of bounds. Well, he's gonna miss one. <laughs> He's actually missed two. He's six of eight. Still it's a pretty good percentage. 13 first quarter points for Miller. Ratliff trying to get physical with Howard. And a whistle. Andre Miller arguing for a travel, but it's gonna be a it's gonna be a person on Ratliff. So two on Dallenbear and two now on. Theo Ratliff and Jim Lynham coming off the bench to inform Tony DeLeo of that fact. And now off the bench comes a third guy to try to deal with Howard in Reggie Evans. But again, add up the fouls. If you get six personal fouls, there are four players that could get a shot at guarding Dwight Howard. You've got 24 personal fouls to waste on that young man. And don't be surprised if Tony DeLeo uses them all. So Jim Lynham delivering that news to DeLeo, who reacts with Reggie Evans. Evans, a guy who can get physical, but of course he's given up about four inches to Howard, who is very tough. There are the Sixers around him. There's Lee with the plunge, his own miss. Lee that time on the miss. Reggie Evans unable to get the rebound. He was wrestling with Howard, trying to keep him off the offensive glass. Leah's second bucket for four, 6'5", 200, all four years at Western Kentucky. Iguodala still has not taken a shot in this game. Iguodala will inbound right in front of Tiger Woods. 
second straight game for him. I think he likes basketball a little bit. He should. It's a great game. Uh-oh, there's Lewis for three. Miller, what a look for Young. A little bit too far was Thaddeus Young for that pass. Petrus open for three, and he rimmed it. Rebound to Iguodala. Sixers would love to run at every opportunity. Iguodala, what a pass for Young, but an offensive foul, Andre Iguodala. Again, I like what Iguodala is trying to do, rebound the ball and go coast to coast. Switch coaching staff wondering if Petrus was in front. Petrus sliding his body over. I don't think he was ever in position to take that charge. Still moving, still sliding. Tough break for Iguodala. Called for the charge. And DeLeo just... is all over the official, Steve Javi, to inform him of his opinion. Meantime, Alston floats home two more. So clearly the backcourt for the Magic, they have come to play. They have 11 of Orlando's 15. Iguodala still without a shot taken. There's his first. Rebound a Rafer Alston. Got him at a trade from Houston right before the deadline. There's Lewis sneaking in and counters Evans. And remember now, no D'Alembert, no Ratliff. Therefore, very little shot blocking for the Sixers. No shot blocking, and because Reggie Evans has to put a body on Howard, the other players on the floor are going to have to help Evans rebound the ball. Orlando ripping off seven unanswered points to Leo continuing his conversation with Steve Javi before convening his huddle in front of his team's bench. D'Alembert and Ratliff each with two trying to deal with Dwight Howard. Orlando Magic trying to beat the 76ers off the dribble on the miss. Evans trying to block out Howard. Lewis gets it right back. If you cannot make it out for Game 3 of the Wachovia Center on Friday, you know we've got you covered. Of course, 5 o'clock Daily News Live, 6.30 Sports Night, 7.30 pregame live for the Wachovia Center Atrium, and then, of course, an 8 o'clock tip. Round 1, Game 3, Sixers and Magic, exclusively on Comcast Sportsnet. Top management from Comcast Spectacor, left to right. Mike Richmond, John Page, Bill Weinberg. Peter Luco to the left there, of course, the president and chief operating officer and the chairman of the board himself, Ed Snyder. Courtside opposite the Orlando bench, watching tonight's game two. Sixers have not scored in the last 6.04, as they have it now out of the timeout. Lou Williams on for the first time after a brilliant performance in game one. Iguodala trying to get him going, encounters Howard. Nice ball movement for Miller. Petrus, the rebound. Number eight, Anthony Johnson in for the first time. And once Howard makes a catch right under the rim, he kiss it goodbye. Just barely got a hand on it, but able to dribble it and control it to himself. People forget how athletic Howard is and how quickly he gets down the floor. First bucket for the guy who led the NBA in dunks during the regular season, 202. Sixers fall behind after leading by as many as seven. Suddenly unable to generate points. There's Miller, who's really hauled the load. There's Young picking up some loose change. Kept alive by Reggie Evans. Good hustle play. He couldn't rebound it, but he kept it alive. Got it to Thaddeus Young, who stuck it back before Howard could block it. Young and Miller right now, the only scores for the Sixers. Trying to get Lewis against Iguodala is the veteran Johnson who takes matters into his own hands. Anthony Johnson, a guy who's been around, but you know what? He could be devastating. He is a very savvy player. Savvy player who this is his 82nd NBA playoff game. And he was by far the best bench player in game one. Dropping nine, including a three, but a very capable playmaker as well. 12 years in the NBA. Iguodala searching out and finding Evans who hit the underside of the rim. Under a minute now remaining here in the first. Lewis not looking for the Johnson feed, and Evans throw it away. Lee for Lewis. And Evans securing it. Now the Sixers have an opportunity. Williams for three, and he missed it. That was a two-on-one. If you're going to take it, you better make it. 
Again, Lou Williams feeling hot. Three for three in the first game from three. Little heat check here early in the second quarter, or end of the first quarter, excuse me. Under half minute to play in this opening quarter of game two. Lewis has Williams on a mismatch. Iguodala got a piece of it. Andre racing for it. Can he save it? There it is. The lob for Young. The catch and the score. And a brilliant play by Andre Iguodala to keep it alive. Kept it alive. And how about the communication, the nonverbal communication between Iguodala and Thaddeus Young? Throw it up. They almost got a lob pass on the save. Shot clock is unplugged. Johnson lost it out of bounds, and that will do it. Great start by the Sixers, and then their number one and number two centers, each picking up two personal fouls. That allowed the Magic to make a move, get some easy buckets, and erase what was a seven-point lead for the Sixers. And in fact, the Magic end the quarter on an 11-4 run. We are locked at 21 after one. Second quarter action on Comcast Sportsnet, the NBA playoffs, in just a moment. 76ers basketball is brought to you by Acura. Acura. Advance. Safe Auto. Minimum coverage for minimum budgets. Call 1-800-SAFE-AUTO. And by your Quality Plus Ford dealers. Look at Lake Eola here in beautiful, beautiful Orlando, Florida, where we have completed one quarter of play in this game two of this opening round series between the 76ers and the Orlando Magic. We're coming to you tonight from the Amway Arena here in Orlando with Phil Lanham, our courtside reporter, Bob Salmi, Mark Sumoff, bringing you all the action in high definition right here. They're home of the Sixers, Comcast Sportsnet. On well, game one, Andre Iguodala and Turgaloo, he would rise up and shoot over Turgaloo any time he felt like it. Iguodala had 10 field goals in the game. Four jumpers over Turgaloo. Stan Van Gundy has changed that matchup. He's gone more athletic and put Petrus on Iguodala early in the first quarter, hoping Thank for more athleticism. Yeah, he brought Petrus in about halfway through the first. Now the second quarter underway. Miller and Williams in the backcourt. Danielle Marshall, a second quarter appearance for him. Evans and Iguodala also up front as Williams got snuffed. Sixers six to shoot. Evans going to that left hand. Turkaloo back into the game, controls the miss. So Turkaloo is back as the Magic running Petrus along with Johnson. This is Michael Petrus, and he drills the three. He is out there with Tony Batty for the first time and Dwight Howard. Petrus during the regular season, just 36% from beyond the arc. And the Magic just two of seven in this game, though, during the regular season, seventh best in the NBA as the Sixers turned it over for the seventh time. They had a total of 10 turnovers in that game one. Turkaloo has Lou Williams, and Johnson's trying to set it up. Now Petrus, another three. Petit over the back of Miller, and it will go as a foul, a loose ball foul on Tony Petit. The injury update brought to you by Mainline Health. Jameer Nelson plans on traveling with the team. They come to Philadelphia for games three and four, Friday and Sunday, respectively. Magic, their largest lead. It's a Marshall three. Danielle with a brilliant performance in game one of the fourth quarter. 11 points in 11 minutes, four of five from the floor, including three threes. Lace defense there once again, forcing the turnover. Iguodala gives it up to Miller diving in. And a whistle. This will go as a blocking foul on Michael Petrus. That's the second time Petrus had tried to get back. This time Petrus doesn't get there again. Couldn't get there the first time against Andre Iguodala. Doesn't get there this time. Not set. Is he set? I don't believe he is. Nice job by Miller here to take himself out of the play by sliding past that defender. Crafty move to go back to the middle of the floor after Petrus tried to get himself set. Bob, we mentioned earlier about Petrus coming into the game maybe earlier than expected to deal with Andre Iguodala. Iguodala to this point scoreless has taken only one shot. Is it the Magic's game plan to try to take him out of the game? But well, again, if you can put a more athletic player on him, you make Iguodala a playmaker. 
when it's all about matchups. Interesting lineup here for Stan Van Gundy. He's gone big. He's still got Howard on the floor with Petit. He's got Turgaloo, Petrus, and Johnson playing the guard positions. Adjustment for Van Gundy, shortening his rotation. Played 10 players in game one. I don't think he's going to play 10 here in game two. And again, Samuel D'Alembert. Well, with Theo Ratliff, each with two personal fouls. The dive by Howard, the plunge by the T. And that's a pet play for the Magic as they like that high pick and roll. Howard goes diving, though that time Howard giving the ball up. And a little different wrinkle. Instead of having a shooter in that strong side left corner, they have Batie in the left corner. He dives to the basket, gets a nice touch pass from Howard. Marshall thinking three, then he gave it up. Miller, who's been the man. Dips in and gets two more. Well, as long as Andre Miller can keep it going, the Sixers can stay afloat. He has 17 of their 25 points. Someone else is going to have to join that scoring party, though, Mark. To this point, only two players have scored for the Sixers, as Howard missed inside, but he'll get two. Miller with his 17, and Thaddeus Young with his eight, and that's been it. Somebody else, as Andre Miller is going to check out here. Royal Ivy going to check in for him. That's a great start for Andre Miller. His start has kept the 76ers in the game. Split that double team. So hard to double team a live ball. Miller's so crafty. Magic tried to double team while he still had a live dribble. Splits that double team, pushes that ball through the double, then spins and scores. So Ivy in for Miller, and you were just saying moments ago, Somebody else has to step up. Well, now you're going to find out because both Miller and Young are on the bench. But these are big minutes for Reggie Evans. There is not any shot blocking on the floor right now for the 76ers. And if you're going to have that type of lineup on the floor, you have to be willing to take fouls, either try to take charges or take fouls at the basket and put players like Howard on the free throw line. So Howard, who is terrific in game one for the line, 11 of 13, one for his first four with D'Alembert and Ratliff. Still residing on the Sixer bench, each with two personals. Wait to see when Tony DeLeo goes back to either of those guys. In the meantime, a third Sixer looking to score. There is Ivy, and his shot considerably short, taken by Turkoglu. Petrus, another three. Orlando struggling from beyond the arc. A good sign for the Sixers, two of nine. And the wrong guys continue to shoot threes for the Magic. Iguodala again forced to give it up with Howard patrolling. That time the foul was on Hito Turkoglu. Official timeout. We will take a timeout. Three and change gone here in the second. Sixers with only two players scoring thus far, down one. Magic by one early in the second quarter. Who's adjusting to what? D Lineham, can you answer that? Well, Mark, Tony Delia was asked a number of times over these last two days, you know, your team's not going to make 7 of 12 from three point land. Your team's not going to shoot 75% in the fourth quarter. But the answer back was, well, Dwight Howard made a lot of shots in that first game as well. Yes, he shoots 57% from the floor, 59 at the line. But he only missed two field goals and three free throws. So those numbers come back to be more of who he is. Obviously, Andre Iguodala right now struggling to get a basket. But over time, he should be back to the score that we've seen throughout the season as well. All right, Dee, thank you for the insight. Iguodala's taken only one shot. He's scoreless thus far in this game. Guarantee the best seats for the playoffs. Games three and four Friday and Sunday. Visit Sixers.com and see all the new and improved benefits and flexible payment options for those of you who are current season ticket holders and are seeking to renew. Secure your seat for next year. Call the Sixers sales department at 215-339-7676, 215-339-7676 to renew your season tickets. Rookie Maurice Spates, who ran six scoreless minutes in game one. Marcin Gortat, second-year player from Poland, number 13, into Czech Marshall. Williams, who missed the three moments ago. Marshall will take it. Missing badly. Spates, nice hustle. Did he step out of bounds? He did. Good hustle played by Spates that time. Sixers had they secured the ball. That ball grazed the front of the rim. Sixers had a reset shot clock. Spates can't quite stay in bounds. Sixers 0 for 3 from beyond and only three free throws, all three from Andre Miller. 
Obviously, the Sixers would like to get to the line a lot more. They were sixth in the NBA during the regular season in free throws attempted per game. Lewis testing the rookie, Spates. Nice defense by him. Offensive rebound to Petrus. Petrus, very athletic player, spinning inside and scoring on Royale Ivy. So Petrus giving the Magic a lift off the bench. He's got five. That's the third time on a drive that a Magic player has either had the ball knocked out of his hand or missed the shot and got his own and stuck it back. Iguodala still scoreless, taking Lewis and all comers. Dwight Howard now out of the game, so perhaps an opportunity for the Sixers to drive a little bit more as the Magic strike off the break. Johnson, the finisher, the second bucket for four. When Andre Iguodala drives that ball from the top of the floor, somebody's got to replace him and balance that floor. Sixers get beat down the floor on the break. For Todd helping Petrus, there is Spates, and he got it. Maurice Spates, his first ever playoff points. And finally, a third Sixers scoring with 7.04 to go here in the second. Up to that point, only Miller and Young had scored for the Sixers. Last touch by Petrus and out of bounds. A well-timed double team that time by Royale Ivy. Waited until Petrus put it on the floor, knocked it free. Petrus knocked it out of bounds. Andre Iguodala, who led the NBA in minutes per game and total minutes played, giving way to Thaddeus Young. So, is it good that the Sixers are down only three as they lob for Spates and it's intercepted and Iguodala is scoreless? Or is that a source of concern? I think it's a glass half full. That'll go as a goaltend on Young. Score two for Hito Turkoglu. His first bucket. Yeah, Turkoglu, that three-point line not there for him. This is something he can do. And he has not put the ball on the floor this series, which is one of the reasons you believe that that ankle is still not 100%. He has not been explosive to the basket, has not been explosive to the rim. Well, he's got a deal here with Thaddeus Young. You might as well go to Young, especially with the way he's scoring early on. Thaddeus gives up the dribble, but hits the jumper anyway. By the way, he's perfect. Five of five for 10. So the combination of Miller and Young right now with 27 of the Sixers, 29. The other two from Maurice Spates. We approach the halfway point of the second. Johnson encounters Spates, who fouled him. Now, he was passing the he ball. Was. Why are they no, giving no, up two at the line? They're going to come together and change this call. There's no question. That was not a shot attempt. There's I'm no question. You. The official came out and indicated two free throws. Clearly threw it to the weak side corner. was coming together that there's and officials come together Steve Javi comes together and they get it right that's the right call but I like what Spates is Spates coming from the weak side fearless with his first jumper fearless in rotation knocks Anthony Johnson to the floor sideline out of bounds past the halfway point of the second Lewis under Young gives it up Johnson for three and he got it Anthony Johnson, he knows how to play, hits the three, and he's got seven off the bench. And 76ers hanging around. They're only down by six, and the damage from three is not being done by Lewis, Lewis and Turgaloo. In fact, the Magic 3 of 10, they call the offensive foul on Lou Williams, trying to break down Michael Petrus. Third time that Petrus has tried to take a charge, he's gotten two out of three. As Lou Williams tries to get by, Petrus takes it on the numbers. 5.33 to play. We're in the second of this game two, round one. Do you love it or what? Sixers playoffs and all-you-can-eat tickets. That's right. Buy all-you-can-eat tickets and see the playoffs. Hot dogs, nachos, popcorn, ice cream, soda, all you could possibly eat, and then some. Just 33 bucks. Remember, Sixers.com or call 215-339-7676. Fine folks at AT&T, bring us the poll question tonight, which was the biggest first round game one upset this past Sunday here in Orlando. Last year at the Palace of Auburn Hills, the Pistons a number two seed and the Sixers number seven, or that other 3-6 matchup. Where the Sixers beat Orlando in that playoff series. It was their first home playoff game, of course, in 
what was it, eight years. They won at the Wachovia Center after splitting down here. Won game four as well. At game one here, a real shocker. Magic coming in with Penny Hardaway and some pretty good players. Chuck Daly was the head coach. Texture answer to 749-377. That's 749-377. Let it be said that at 2.59, with 2.59 to play in the second, Andre Iguodala, his first point of the game. Again, we talk about what the Philadelphia 76ers are trying to do to the Magic by design. The Magic trying to do to Iguodala by design. Taking him out offensively here in the first half. But I think it's a plus. I think if at this point he's got one point, you're down two, he's going to get his at some point. I think so, too. So I think it's good. made that point. It is good, and he continues to make plays for his teammates. Courtney Lee hitting the three. Lee percentage-wise during the regular season, one of their better three-point shooters, though not one of the go-to guys. Turkaloo and Lewis were certainly the main three-point shooters. And you count the field goal here. We also have a foul as well. Foul on Samuel Dallenbear. Trying to keep Howard off the offensive glass. Could be one of those odd three-point plays. Courtney Lee hits the jump shot, and now Howard will go to the line as Dallenbear picks up his third foul. So Sammy, only seven minutes in this game, three personal fouls. And he didn't need that. And now he picked up a technical as well. And the frustration level you can understand, but you have to grab yourself. You have to stop yourself. In a playoff game that could be a one possession, a one point game, you have to be able to walk, walk past Steve Javi without making a comment. Whether you agree or disagree with the call. So now you're looking at five points in one possession. White Howard is shooting it's a one. break for the 76ers, but again, it's not an easy assignment for Samuel Dallenberg wrestling Dwight Howard, trying to keep him off the offensive glass. The 76ers continue. Let me correct myself here. The Lee field goal was a deuce, not a three. One of the officials put up a hand and I thought it was a three it turns out to be a two just uh, probably the worst shot in basketball 22 feet in the corner that one was 21 feet 11 and three quarter inches toe just barely on the line Sixers down six Andre Iguodala the miss and the rebound to Howard Iguodala 0 for 2 of the game thus far they try to get it to Howard in deep that's where he likes it Ratliff trying to push him off the block Williams off the double. It's a lead three. Rebound to Ratliff. Magic their largest lead at six. Iguodala trying to bust a move on the rookie Lee with Howard looming. The setup of Williams. Nice defense by Alston and a whistle and a foul. It's going to be, or it's going to be a three second violation. Thank goodness not a foul on Theo Ratliff. And Lou Williams turning down that open jump shot on that kick out by Andre Iguodala. Theo Ratliff thinking offensive rebound, tries to work two himself inside. Two now Stan Van Gundy has taken Howard out, replaced him with Gortat, trying to keep him from picking up his third foul. In the meantime, the Sixers, 10 turnovers, matching their total for the entire game one. Lewis over Iguodala, rebound to Ratliff. Miller, who's been marvelous, posting Alston. Gortat, Lewis thinking about a double. It's an Iguodala three. Sixers yet to hit a three. They are 0 for 4 from beyond after some terrific three-point shooting in game one, where they were 7 of 12. Gortat denied by Williams. What a play. Lou Williams climbed the ladder on the near seven-footer. Oh, and there's a steal by Lee on Iguodala. And Andre reaching out, and the foul is committed. But Iguodala had his pocket picked. A good quick play by Lee, but how about the play by Lou Williams to start the game? Andre Miller was rotating from the weak side and stealing the ball down low. Lou Williams rotates from the weak side and goes up above the rim to block the shot by Gortat. And a heads-up play by Lee to strip Iguodala. And now Lee will go to the line. Sixers in the penalty. And for Iguodala, his second, so protection for him. Reese Spates has come on. He is in for Ratliff. Theo sitting with two. Billy Green has come on with 1.11 to play. And Courtney Lee, the Magic's leading scorer with nine, will get one more. 
coming up. The Taco Bell halftime report. Michael Barkan, John Celestan, Gerald Henderson all in the studios. They'll tip off the taco. We'll be back courtside here in Orlando. We'll have the highlights and all the important stats from the first half. Sixers down seven for the first time. Thanks to a 7-3 magic run. Courtney Lee with five of those seven points. Williams giving it up for Spates. Turkaloo the interception. Lee takes on Miller and had his way. Courtney Lee, high man for the Magic with 11. And now they lead it by nine, their largest advantage. Tony Galeo going to call a 20-second timeout here. But the difference in the first half between game one and game two, 76ers have turned the ball over, and the Magic have taken advantage. Top of the floor, Lou Williams trying to turn the corner, looks weak side, poke free by Turgaloo. And Courtney Lee had 13 in the first half in game one. He's got 11 here. But the 76ers' inability to take care of the ball the way they did in game one is the reason that the Magic have built themselves a nine-point lead. It's a great point. As much as the Sixers like to get turnovers and run, the Magic, pretty athletic team. They'll take a lot of threes in transition. Fortunately, that hasn't been successful for them. But now the Orlando Magic with the nine-point advantage, their largest. And this crowd, which was sitting in stunned silence early as Andre Miller and the Sixers bolted to that 17-10 lead, now very much into it here as we get set to close this first half. And it's a total team thing, Mark. 76ers doing the same thing strategy-wise, holding Turgaloo and Lewis down, but not taking care of the ball here in the first half. Sixers here can work two possessions for one. Miller dips in, gets two more. Andre Miller, a sensational half. He's got 21. As we approach in our mission, half minute to play here in the second. Turkle wants Willie Green, and Green bumped and fouled him. Turkle, of course, at 6'10, and Willie at 6'3. And Turkle will head back to the strike. Guido Turkle shooting two. It's amazing how a game can change, how a series can change game to game. Tony DeLeo coming up with a solid, and his coaching staff coming up with a solid strategy to deal with two of the best three-point shooters in the game in Turgaloo and Lewis. And here in game two, 76ers turning the ball over that has kind of ignited the guards, ignited Alston and Lee, and gotten them out into the open floor and gotten the magic needed points in the absence of scoring from Turgaloo and Lewis. Magic right now with 11 points on count on 12 Sixer turnovers. Again, they had only 10 in game one. Lou Williams, he is scoreless after dropping 18 in game one. Nearly two seconds separating the clocks. Williams taking Alston. Got it. Lou Williams off the schneid, 2.1 to go. Nicely done by Lou, the heave from Alston, and that will do it as Williams measured it perfectly and tripped out what he could of that second quarter clock. So Tony DeLeo and his 76ers trailing by seven here at intermission of this game two, round one, best of seven playoff series between his Sixers and the Orlando Magic. And the likes of Courtney Lee, Anthony Johnson, and Michael Petras doing a lot of the damage to the Sixers in that first half. Halftime on Comcast Sportsnet. Magic 46, Sixers 39 to the studio with Michael, John, and Gerald. It'll be the Taco Bell after this. The 2009 NBA playoffs on Comcast Sportsnet are being brought to you by Chevy. Find your nearest dealer on ChevyDealer.com. By the Pennsylvania Lottery. Benefits older Pennsylvanians every day. Must be 18 years or older to play. Please play responsibly. And by Mainline Health, official health care partner of the 76ers. Before we start this game two, round one, with the Sixers down seven, let's hear what D-Lineham has to say, Denise. 
Mark, every person that was walking out of the Sixers locker room was like turnovers, turnovers. And if you take the points off turnovers away, they would actually be leading the game by four. So obviously they have to take care of the basketball. Tony D'Elia said he thought Andre Godal got away from looking for a shot because Dwight Howard had done such a good job of clogging the middle. And then Andre Miller was doing a good job of shooting that he kept looking for him. But they will run some plays early to get him some jumpers. And I asked who will start to play Dwight Howard, Theo or Sam? And he said, Sam, even though he does have the three personal fouls, and Mark, keep in mind that in game one, Samuel Dellenbaugh had an excellent third quarter defending Dwight Howard aggressively after picking up the two early personal fouls in that game as well. Well, AT&T called the game is all about the turnovers. Keep in mind that the 76ers in winning game one turned the ball over 10 times in the entire game. Sixers with 12 turnovers to the Magic 7 here in the first half. Along with Dean Lineham and Bob Salmi, Mark Zumoff, we thank you so much for joining us for playoff action, Sixers playoff action here on Comcast Sportsnet with the third quarter underway. Howard immediately to work on D'Alembert, gives it up to the plunging Alston, and Howard delivering yet another assist, his second of the game, and Alston able to benefit, so the backcourt continues to carry the magic. Lee and Alston with 20 of their 48 that said they have spread the scoring around as they lob for D'Alembert compliments of Andre Iguodala and for D'Alembert his first points good for Tony DeLeo to see what he talked about in practice all week long magic overplaying D'Alembert nice back cut for the lob dunk so Alston not normally a proficient shooter in fact five of nine and Alston and Lee their backcourt each with 11 Sixers running Andre Miller with Willie Green Thaddeus Young, Andre Iguodala, the forwards. Samuel D'Alembert in the middle. This is Green open. Really the second shot he has taken, and he is scoreless. At only two points, 17 minutes of game one. D'Alembert tries to put a body on Howard. Good luck. Howard, by the way, now he's got six, but he was just one of four at halftime. He did have three blocks and four boards. But again, single coverage. He's only got that scoring total with single coverage to this point in the game and that time with Howard out of the picture Iguodala driving in and he was fouled by Alston His first, first team foul. Well, this is where Dwight Howard has really really improved his offensive game that one or two bounce to the middle of the floor he's now got a right hand jump hook a left hand jump hook Worked very hard with assistant coach Patrick Ewing to add those skills to his inside game and one of the reasons he's been a monster this year for the Orlando Magic and you know you could draw some parallels because Ewing known for his defense when he first came into the league did a great job polishing his offense and Howard in much the same fashion learning his offense as he grows up in the NBA so valuable for a young player like Howard to be tutored by a player like a Patrick Ewing Hall of Famer leading scorer in the history of the New York Knickerbockers how valuable is anything he has to say about scoring the basketball. Iguodala, one of two, Sixers down ten. Once again, Alston Lee with Howard in the middle. Lewis, who's got it now, and Turkoglu, the forwards for the Magic. Lee is open for a three. Lewis bursting in and counters D'Alembert, and for Sammy, it'll be his fourth. Well, the strategy of leaving Lee open to miss jump shots only works if you can secure the defensive rebound. 76ers leave Lee wide open, late contest. And a bounce here. Man's rebound that time by Lewis coming across the floor. Beats Miller, who was matched up on him in the low post. Beats Miller to the ball. And now gets himself two free throws as D'Alembert picks up his fourth. And so Theo Ratliff will come on. Theo himself, two personals. D'Alembert, four personals, and a technical that he picked up towards the end of the second quarter. And Theo in to give up his body on Dwight Howard. But something he's going to have to work on. Two of his four personal fouls were not on his primary man, were not committed on Howard. Helping from the weak side, helping on offensive rebounds. He's picked up two of his four personals. He needs to concentrate, get those personals on Howard. That's that's a big enough task to wrestle him and keep yourself out of foul trouble. Iguodala giving it up. Green measuring a three. Sixers yet to hit from beyond. They are 0 for 5. Lee a burst to the hoop and he lays in two. Courtney Lee, the Magic's leading scorer with 13. And that's their lead right now. It is their largest. 
Tony Sixers DeLeo. calling for and getting a timeout. Seen about enough here in the third quarter. The Magic have extended their lead to 13. Critical point in the game for the Sixers. They will huddle up. 9.31 to play in the third, finding themselves down by 13 points. Regardless of what happens in this game, the Sixers will still have the home court advantage. Make the home court an advantage by coming out for games three and four, Friday and Sunday at the Wachovia Center. Friday's tip is at 8, Sunday's tip at 6.30. Go to Sixers.com or call 215-339-7676 for more information. Free t-shirts to all fans for game three and free rally towels for all in attendance for game four. Tickets, by the way, start at just 15 bucks. Come see an NBA playoff game. Sixers need something here out of the timeout. They isolate Iguodala on Turkaloo. Now Lewis has him on a switch. Hito takes him back. Andre drills the jumper. Let it be said, his first bucket of the game. With about 9.17 to play here in the third. He's got four points. Sixers down 11. That's a Lewis three, and he connects Richard Lewis with his first three of the game. And 76ers to that point have done a decent job of being crowded up on him, body on body. First real clean look that Lewis has gotten into three in two games. Iguodala surrounded. Howard picks it clean. Turkaloo bothered by Green. Alston the loose ball. He toes the line to keep it in. Iguodala's got company on the steal. Races in and throws down two. Lewis was thinking about contesting that shot, but I think Iguodala scared him off. He knows what a great finisher Iguodala is. Iguodala goes in the air. Lewis decides not to. Well, that's going to feel good for Iguodala now. The jumper and the heave down. Ratliff bumping with Howard. And for Theo, it will be his third. And Theo his battling third, with Howard in the low post. Now called before the shot. Going to be sideline out of bounds here for the Magic. But if you're officiating that matchup between Ratliff and Howard, you know, who's bumping who and trying to create space? Ratliff trying to hold his ground. Howard trying to knock him back. Lee, as Ratliff went for the block, Howard was free to rip off the offensive rebound and slam for two of his eight. And you see why you don't take a body off Howard on dribble penetration, because the moment that you do, Andre Iguodala has no shot to stop that putback. Magic, their largest lead at 14. Green taking Alston, rimmed it. Rebound to Howard. Willie Green 0 for 4 and scoreless. Turkaloo running into Ratliff. He threw it away anyway. Theo looking up at the official saying, where was the call? But I guess in some ways the issue moot because the Magic end up turning it over. They're ninth. Well, that guy in the fourth row was open. Turkaloo put it right on the money. Magic outscoring the Sixers 14 to 7 in the quarter. Miller posting. Howard, of course, looming. Andre Miller, a tremendous first half. He had 21 at halftime. He carried a good part of the load, especially early for the Sixers. He had 13 in the first quarter alone. In that last possession, Howard had the discipline to stay down. And one of the best shot fakes in the game. Iguodala getting a piece of the rock. The Magic will keep it here with eight to shoot. Eight to shoot. Sixers going to have to generate something defensively, generate something offensively. Game a long way from being over. They've been down 14 before. They're going to have to find a way to get stops as Lee knocks down another jumper. Oh, they were down as many as 18 late in the third quarter of game one. They trail by 14 after three complete quarters. Now scoring the Magic by 16. Wild and Willie fourth and final quarter. Miller rimming it. Sixers being out rebounded by five. Alston on the loose. Ratliff going to get a piece of it. Well, what does it matter? You go for the block, and there is Howard free to roam and put it back. And now Howard with 10 and 9 boards, one of three Magic players in double figures. And this lead has expanded to 18 points. And the 
crowd very much in it here at Amway Arena. Iguodala taking Howard at the very least. You hope for a foul on him. Andre Iguodala, though, nets two, and he's got eight. Lewis for three. Rashard Lewis struggling again in this game. Miller never picked up his pivot foot. Fans looking for a walk. Look at the Magic transition defense. 76ers look like they had a break. Magic could get back, but Willie Green answers with a jumper. Willie is first bucket. Aggressive defense as the Sixers showed in game one on Hito Turkoglu. That time, Green colliding with Lewis. And Willie called for the block. The Magic going back to what they've done all season long. Four players behind the three-point line. Step Howard out to set a pick at the three-point line and then dive him to the basket. It's a formula for success, a formula that won the Magic 59 games during the regular season. Stay with us, Sixer fans. You know the Sixers have comeback power. They did it in game one. There is Lee, and he drills it. Courtney Lee. We mentioned his name often on Sunday night in game one. He had 18. He's got 17 to lead Orlando in this contest. First round pick of the Magic. Coming up large here in the postseason thus far. Green lost it. Young picked it up and scored it. Thaddeus Young, he's got a dozen his first points of the second half. Great hustle played by Thaddeus. Loose ball on the floor. Green goes to the floor. Thaddeus runs it down on what looked to be a turnover. Young, six of eight. Combination of Miller and Young with 33 of the Sixers, 52. There's Lewis trying his hand at another three. Ratliff, was he holding Howard? I believe that's the call. And for Theo, it'll be his fourth. So Ratliff and D'Alembert now each with four personal fouls. So what does Tony DeLeo do now? That's, at this point in the game, you might have to stay with either Ratliff or Sam, bring Samuel D'Alembert back in the game. But on this shot, the only chance you have here, Ratliff in a bad spot inside position, the only chance he has to stop a dunk here is to hold Howard down to the floor. Good foul that time that prevented an easy two for Dwight Howard. Howard unfurling a couple of monster dunks off of misses here in this third quarter. Hammer right back to him, and there's Ratliff taking the charge, and the offensive foul is called on Howard, and for Dwight Howard, it's personal number three, and a technical has been called as well on number 12. Great defensive job by Ratliff. He's been bumping back, trying to keep him out of the paint. This time he gets his shoulder in place, gets his body in front of Howard, takes the charge, and Howard overreacting, fires the ball out of bounds and picks himself up a technical foul. So Andre Miller will shoot the technical free throw after Howard was whistled for the personal, his third, and the tee by Javi, who called one earlier on Samuel D'Alembert. As Miller, the Sixers' best free throw shooter during the regular season, and three for three before that, missing the tee. Sometimes a play like that, a play like Theo Ratliff just made, that can spark you, that can turn things around. Sometimes a defensive play against a player who seems to be getting it going like Howard does can turn things around for the 76ers. Ratliff now weighed by 25 pounds, but a lot of experience. Howard is way out on Miller. Iguodala, a chance to drive, and right by everybody, and he slams for two as Howard got caught on a switch. Don't get caught on a switch. He's on Miller. Iguodala, instant recognition, beats Petrus off the dribble. And Stan Van Gundy not happy. He calls a timeout. Sixers climb back to within 12. Sixers shooting over 51% in this game. Sixers down as many as 18, slicing it to a dozen. And we will take a timeout. Four and change to play here in the third quarter of this game, too. After game two, a sensational trio to break it down for you in the studio. Michael B., Michael Barkan, along with Gerald Henderson and John Celestan, D. Lina will be in the Sixers locker room as well. As Dodge presents Sixers post game live after this game two, round one between the Sixers and the Magic, right here on your home for 76 basketball and high definition Comcast Sportsnet. For our Dodge driver of the game, Andre Godala scoreless in the first half, goes into drive mode here in the third. 
four field goals for him in the third quarter as he drives to the basket, finishing in spectacular fashion for our Dodge drive of the game. So Iguodala unleashed, first the jumper, then that slam. He has nine of his ten here in the quarter. And now the Magic out of the timeout. Nice defensive stand here by the Sixers. You can just feel it. Magic left with five to shoot. Lee goes probing. Ratliff defending him. Petrus, an offensive rebound. And because the ball never hit the rim, they say shot clock violation on Orlando. Sixers catch a break on the miss that didn't touch the rim. Petrus again sneaking in from the weak side on the drive. Altered by Ratliff. Altered to the point where it does not touch the rim. But Petrus sneaking in from the weak side of the floor comes up with the offensive rebound but doesn't realize the shot clock had not been reset. Sixers managing their turnovers a lot better. They have 13 for the game, 11 for Orlando. Young taking Lewis, got it. Thaddeus Young, steady as he goes, he's got 14. And the Sixers clawing back, now they're down 10. It was a big time shot. Lewis gave him a forearm to the neck and he still made the jump hook. Now Lewis's counterpart missing the three. He's been missing some looks. Howard rips down his 10th. And he wants it back. And Alston is saying, hang on, big fella. Let's work this first. Petrus, that's for three. Rebound to Ratliff. Pick and roll, pick and roll, and more pick and roll as the Magic continue to space behind that three-point line. Orlando, four of 19 from beyond the arc. Miller against the 6-5 lead. Miller at 6-2 with Howard looming. Open, Young. Ripped down by Miller. What a play by Andre Miller. Pulls down the offensive rebound. The Sixers here with a fresh 24. Iguodala on a rope to Ratliff. And it would have counted. Theo will go to the line after he was fouled by Lee. What a competitor Andre Miller is. Whatever you need, if you're struggling for a bucket, he makes a field goal. If you need a pass to be made, he he makes the pass. If you need an offensive rebound, he's the one that makes it. Drop down inside that time. Nice drop pass from Megadala. The Magic get a fistful of Ratliff's shirt from behind. Even the six are faithful. <laughs> Almost an N1. That would be Peter Luco and Ed Snyder. With top management from Comcast Spectacore. Mike Richmond, John Page, Phil Weinberg joining them. The trip here to Orlando for game two. Ratliff to the strike, getting one more. Lee limping off moments ago, being attended to by the Orlando medical staff. He took a shot from Andre Miller on that offensive rebound when Miller came crashing from the right side of the floor. Sixers, a 9-2 burst. They're down 9 after trailing by as many as 18. Two and change to go here in the third. It was around this time in game one they made their move as Petrus, thinking shot before catch, missed the pass, and the Orlando Magic turn it over again. One of the things that can happen to a player like Petrus is you're open for a reason, and that puts pressure on him. He's blowing on his hands right now, trying to get himself settled back down. But when you leave a player open, that plays with your mind a little bit. Iguodala has got Turkoglu. We're going to bust a move on him. Good aggressive move by Andre Iguodala. It'll be Dwight Howard, and that'll be his fourth personal foul. Amazing how three different Magic players all raised their hand. Pietras raised his hand. Anthony Johnson raised his hand. And Turkoglu was about 40 feet away from the play. He raised his hand. All in hopes that Howard would not pick up his fourth foul. Now listen, Howard has had his issues. He has fouled out of five games. That happened during the past regular season. In the meantime, they continue to work on Courtney Lee as Howard has to take a seat. 76ers continue to play aggressively, continue to fight back. One more for Andre. Nigadala, after struggling in the first half, has come out here in the third with a new level of aggression and has kept the 76ers close enough, close in striking range. Ratliff sitting with four. Maurice Spates, the rookie, played well in the first half. First time in the second half for him. And the Sixers have it to seven, trailing by as many as 18. Here they come again.
Young has Turkaloo on a switch. Turkaloo, that's for a two. Rebound to Miller. Hito Turkaloo, not the same player we have seen in seasons past. Only six points, a measly one of three from the floor. Miller has the veteran Johnson. Yes! Andre Miller, first points of the second half, and the Sixers are down five. Right into the post, right at Johnson, that patented little spin move to the baseline. All of a sudden, 76ers are right back in it. 23 in the game for Andre Miller. Spates, it'll be a block on Maurice Spates. Turkaloo putting a shoulder into Spates, but the foul on the rookie. That'll be his third. It'll put the Sixers in the penalty. And interesting, even on these plays, Spates sliding his feet, Spates still moving as we watch Lee head to the locker room. Saw him stretching his legs earlier on the bench. Trying to stretch those legs out. Something obviously wrong as he heads to the locker room. Big blow for Stan Van Gundy and the Magic. Lee has been terrific in the first two games. He's been the one guy the Sixers have left open. Trying to stay connected with Turgaloo and Lewis, and he's delivered here in the first two games. Archon Gortat just into the game for Howard sitting with four. Kept alive that missed free throw. Sixers need a stop. You can't allow more points off of that. There's Turkaloo, and he hit the three. You do a nice job defensively. You put someone on the free throw line, and how many times, Mark, after an offensive rebound, does someone like Turkaloo deliver a dagger like that three from the top of the floor? Turkaloo, his first three of the series. Suddenly, the Magic by nine. Iguodala taking it hard to Marchin Gortat, who fouled him. It'll be two at the line for Iguodala. Heady play, too, because the Sixers hope to get two possessions for one here at the close of the third quarter. And Iguodala has come out with a new aggression level here in the third. And with Dwight Howard on the bench for the Orlando Magic, 76ers should put it in full drive mode for as long as he's on the bench because the shot blocking for the Magic is not there with Dwight Howard on the bench. It's funny, similar circumstances, game one, late in the third. Howard has to go to the bench, though that time because of the eye issue. Now because of four personal fouls, Sixers made their move, scored four straight at the end of the third, down 14 after three, and of course that tremendous fourth quarter, which they went on to win. What's the issue here? Well, Spades and Lewis are lucky. The ball was with Iguodala, and they both moved. And since they both moved, officials couldn't decide if there was a lane violation on one or the other. But once that shooter has the ball, you have to stay in place. You can't switch spots. Sixers down eight. Iguodala, five of eight from the stripe. He's got 13. 12 of those points here in this third quarter. Lewis nearly lost it. Turkaloo ridden by Young. Great defense. Rebound to Williams. Shot clock is unplugged. Sixers making a big time ground down by as many as 18 as we get set to close the third. Williams against Johnson. Lou for two. Ivy bursting in and that will do it. But an excellent job by the Sixers to shave 10 off of what was an 18-point Orlando lead earlier in the quarter. And now we are through three. The Orlando Magic 70, 76ers 62 in this game two round one, which continues on Comcast Sportsnet right after this. Sixers basketball is brought to you by Honda. Test drive a 2009 Honda today at your Honda dealer. And by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. Visit us at GEICO.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO. Beautiful night after a beautiful day here in Orlando. They're on their feet here at the Amway Arena where their team leads by a seven. For taught the lob from Johnson, retaken by Iguodala. Sixers running Ivy along with Williams. It's a young three. Sixers without a three in this game. They are now 0 for 6 from beyond. Setting the Orlando Magic. 
It is Anthony Johnson along with Michael Petrus. Marching Gortat in there for Dwight Howard with Lewis and this man Turkaloo the forwards. Young drape on Turkaloo. Johnson who could do some damage. That is a three and the rebound to Ivy. So again the Sixers running Lou Williams with Royale Ivy in the backcourt. Three spates in the middle with Thaddeus Young and Andre Iguodala the forwards. D'Alembert, Ratliff, and Dwight Howard for the Magic, each with four personal fouls. Young given room by Turkaloo. Rebound to Gortat. 76ers right now settling for jump shots. And in that third quarter, they were the aggressor going to the rim. Foul number 12. 76ers need to take advantage of the fact that Howard's on the bench. And Andre Iguodala did exactly that in the third quarter, our turning point in this game. Andre Iguodala, one point at halftime. No field goals in the first half. Comes out in the third quarter with a much higher concentration level and a much more aggressive. Putting that ball on the floor, getting himself to the rim, getting the 76ers back into the game. Sixers ended that third quarter on a 16-6 run, shaving 10 off of that 18-point Orlando lead. Lewis. Had it gone, it would have count. D-Line, what's up? Well, coming out of that last quarter, one of the things they said, let's make our hay before Dwight Howard comes back. 10.36 to go, and he's already checking back into this game. Not a lot of hay. Was, time was made for that hay. But the other, they had not gotten to the backboard in the third quarter. They only had five rebounds. Tony saying we, we can ill afford to let them have second chance opportunities. And in fact, being out rebounded D by seven for the game. So here comes Howard and Tony DeLeo reacting with Theo Rattler. Howard replacing Gortat. Tony Batti about to make his first second half appearance for the guy shooting the free throws in Richard Lewis. Lewis in this game, just two of 11, a guy who tortured the Sixers during the regular season. In fact, he was Orlando's leading scorer against the Sixers. Averaging just under 21 and shooting 50% from beyond the arc. He's just one of six from beyond in this game. And again, two of 11 overall. That said, all five Magic starters now in double figures. Sixers down 10. Young, can he take Turkaloo? He's thinking about it. And Hito knocked it away and out of bounds. Back for the Magic, number four, Tony. That is Young getting a lesson on what it's like in that low post. Turkaloo just cracked him with that left arm as he tried to make that patented spin. Made body contact and knocked that ball out of bounds. It's tough down there in the low post in the playoffs. The T in replacing Lewis. Iguodala rising up but missing. Ratliff finds the miss. Sixers here with a fresh 24. Ivy, that's for three. Sixers still without a three in the game. Floorboard to Young. Sixers 0 for 7 from beyond. After unloading and hitting 7 of 12 from beyond in game one. Young, he'll try a three. Got it. Offensive rebounding, the key there as the Sixers hit their first three of the game in eight tries. Young with 17 and the Sixers down seven. Just like an offensive rebound led to a three for the Magic, two offensive rebounds leads to a three for Thaddeus Young. Andre Miller coaching the Sixers defense waiting to come back into this game. Ratliff patrolling on Turkaloo can't leave him open Johnson missing the three but as Young flies to the floor we have a whistle and it's going to be a foul is it on Howard it is Howard and that'll be cleared, a fifth cleared out Thaddeus Young with his left hand and Thaddeus Young sticking his nose in in rotation to put a body on Howard and Howard can argue this call till the cows come home he took his left arm and threw Thaddeus Young to the floor great job by Thaddeus to rotate from the weak side and sacrifice his body to block Howard out bottom of your screen Takes that left hand. That is no longer in the picture because he's laying on the floor. See the frustration level of Howard as he now goes to the bench again with five fouls. And Gortat playing the role of Howard, denying Young on the drive. He's thinking rim with Howard, the great shot blocker, out of the game. Gortat through his legs. Williams forcing the issue on Johnson. And Iguodala missed the putback. Ratliff and Miller are back for the Sixers. Here's Lee. Oh, denied by Ratliff for the play. Iguodala, all alone, Williams, lays it home. Back-to-back -back action. It looked like the 76ers had a layup and a follow. Looked like Lee had a layup. Ratliff blocks it with two hands, and the Sixers quickly down court for the easy deuce. 
give it up to 36 year old Theo Ratliff who is playing this game like a 26 year old in our safe auto minimum coverage how about this coverage with two hands at the rim Courtney Lee thinking dunk Theo Ratliff telling him no way and Lou Williams who went to the floor on one end still on the other end of the floor Sixers quickly up the floor to score the ball to one hand dunk two hand block great play by Theo Ratliff as the Sixers answer back with the lay in. Well, they just came back from 18 down again. And I keep it up. I mean, kids never quit. And I, I mean, we, I'm very proud of them. I think we're going to do it. You have an unbelievable vantage point just to see how big and how powerful Dwight Howard is. Is he an amazing talent, in your opinion? He's definitely amazing. But uh, I think our guys have done a good job of neutralizing him tonight. All right, I won't let you miss any more action. I hope we do do it like okay, you said. Thanks. Neutralizing him, D line him and Ed Snyder to the point where he's on the bench with five personals. Courtney Lee, of all people, the rookie continues to impress. He's got 19 to lead all magic scores. A big bucket for them out of the timeout. Daniel Marshall, first time in the second half, is in for the sixes. And Igadala's pass inside is thrown away. Fortunately for the Sixers, managing their turnovers much better in the second half. First half, definitely turnover trouble for the 76ers. 12 in the first half, only two here in the second. But a critical turnover here in the fourth as the Sixers trying to climb back. Important time for the Sixers here. You got to feel they can win this, especially with Howard on the bench. Daniel Marshall fighting through the screen. Trying to attack Lee is called for the foul. Danielle, his first three on the Sixers team. Lewis tucking his shirt back in because Daniel Marshall had a fistful of shirt and yanked it out of his shorts. And Marshall has Lee on a switch. Ratliff looming as well. Igadala pestering him. Turkoglu three to shoot, got it off, and he was fouled. Marshall cannot believe the call, but he has whistled for the personal. It'll be three at the line for Hito Turkoglu. A tough break for the 76ers. They knocked that ball free in a hustle play by Lee to save it. And then just a little bit too close here. Tough call that time. Was the left hand on the back? Did it move Turgaloo? Was Turgaloo acting or, or was he reacting to a push? Turgaloo, 81% from the line during the regular season. Now five of seven after that miss. Turkoglu is ninth year for the nation of Turkey, 6'10", 220. Last year, most improved player in the NBA. And an opportunity for him to exercise his option to become a free agent after this season. This to put the Magic up nine. Two one five three three nine seventy six seventy six for playoff tickets. The Sixers, no matter what happens tonight, will have a home court advantage. Friday, game three at eight. Game four Sunday at six thirty. Two one five three three nine seventy six seventy six. Or go to Sixers.com. The Sixers, I got to tell you, wildly entertaining. Lots of gumption. Lots of fight. Once again in this game, down eighteen, and right now trailing in the contest by only seven. It's a lead three, and he got it. Courtney Lee, while all other sources have been shut off by the Sixers. Lewis, Turkoglu, Howard on the bench with five. It's Lee, the rookie, who has been a major source of scoring for Orlando. He's got 22, besting his previous playoff high in his debut on Sunday, where he dropped 18. There, Lee fouling Miller. Showing that he's got some toughness. How about how he's bounced back after Theo Ratliff caught his dunk attempt with two hands? He's now hit two consecutive jump shots. So many times you judge a player by how he bounces back. A couple of plays earlier, he had a dunk attempt block. Here he answers back with a three, his second straight jump shot after having his shot blocked by Theo Ratliff. Ratliff called for the travel. And I don't buy this call. There's a reason he traveled. Theo Ratliff trying to punch in from the weak side is getting pushed from behind. That's exactly what Tony DeLeo's 
talking about the Steve Javi. There's a reason he walked, and the reason is he got pushed in the low post. 15 turnovers for the Sixers, but once again, a much better job at taking care of the basketball. Only three turns after intermission. Sixers down 10, but plenty of time remaining here. Johnson. His own miss. Fourth time that it's happened, Mark. Orlando Magic player penetrating to the basket, misses his own shot, gets his own shot back, and sticks it back in the basket. 11 offensive rebounds for the match. Iguodala, that's for three. Got it! Hit the wood as well. Andre Iguodala buries the three. 15 of his 16 points after halftime. That's a huge three for the Sixers as the Magic began to pull away just a bit. There's Johnson shoving away Williams and Lou looking at the official hoping for a call. Turkaloo, that's for two. Rebound to Ratliff. Halfway through the fourth and final quarter. It's go time here, Mark. Howard's still on the bench. No shot blocking in right now for the Magic. As Miller rolls that ball off his own foot and another critical turnover for the 76ers here in the fourth. Take a timeout with 5.49 to play in this fourth and final quarter of this game two. And the Sixers have come roaring back to make a game of it. So right here, unlucky is Andre Miller with Johnson reaching in and Miller claiming that Johnson hit it last, but it falls on deaf ears. Back with more in a moment. Packed with great information and highlights and analysis on all your teams. Sixers, the Flyers, the Phillies, and a scouting report for the Eagles on defensive tackles. What more could you ask for? You'll ask for it, you'll get it. On Sports Night tonight at 10 o'clock, Toyota Sports Night right here on Comcast Sportsnet. Along with D-Lineman Bob Salmi, Mark Zumoff tonight, we welcome you back to game two. 76ers trailing throughout most of this game. In fact, their last lead came at 17-15. And the last tie came at the end of the first quarter, down 21. Sixers down as many as 18 with six and a half to go in the third. They cut 10 off of that to make it an eight-point game after three. Right now they trail by nine as the Magic now have it out of the timeout. And the Sixers make one more push. Dwight Howard still on the Orlando bench. He's got five personals. Lee, who has done serious damage tonight. Turkaloo over Ratliff and Williams. And that's the old Edu Turkaloo, the guy that can put it on the floor and rise up and make a play. It's the first time he's made an athletic play in this series. And he's got 14, albeit on just three of seven from the floor. Iguodala. Stays outside and drills it. All cotton for Andre Iguodala. 18 points after scoring only one in the opening 24 minutes. Again, the Sixers have it to nine under five to play. Turkaloo moving on Young off of Gortat taken by Young. Here are the Sixers down nine. Miller taking the taller Courtney Lee, looking for a cutter. Off the double. And now a steal sets up the magic fast break. But Iguodala there to turn Turkaloo away. Johnson got it over Ratliff. Rebound to Lou Williams. Four and change to go. Sixers still down nine. And Dwight Howard about to check in. Miller has Lee. Rebound, Ratliff in traffic. Sixers here with a fresh 24. And Miller is fouled by Anthony Johnson. Tony DeLeo up arguing for a two-shot foul. His first 13 Time James Cooper saying foul on the ground as Howard checks back in the last four minutes of the fourth quarter. 
So Howard is back. Five personal fouls. Court taught to the bench. Three team fouls for the Magic. Sixers at the team foul limit. Iguodala, beautiful feed to Ratliff, who slams for two. I say take it to Dwight Howard. Take it right at Howard. Nice job by Iguodala to bait him to help and then drop it to his teammate. Ratliff, his first bucket. He's got three. Sixers down seven. Plenty of time for the Sixers. Howard with Ratliff standing his ground. They tangle and a whistle and a foul on field. Foul number 15, Theo Ratliff. And for Ratliff, that is personal number five. And it's such a tough assignment for Ratliff. Now, do you go down here on the first contact? Battles him, tries to keep him out. Do you go down on the second contact? Or do you stick your arm in and try and contest the shot? Such a tough spot to be in. Do you put it in the official's hands and go down on that contact and hope for the charge? Here's Howard with the Sixers in the penalty. Ratliff discussing that latest call. So now a battle of attrition between the two centers in the game. Howard and Ratliff each with five. And again, the Sixers in the penalty. One of two for Howard. Magic with seven more free throws in the game. They had five more than the Sixers in game one. Williams and Howard in the same area there as Howard blocked the shot. Lou, of course, thinking, get him out of the game. Tough job by Lou. Tries to put that left shoulder on him, but that left shoulder hit him in the belly. Howard. Wow, he stuck an elbow into Ratliff. An offensive foul on Howard, and he is out of the game. He jammed an elbow right into the throat of Theo Ratliff. And Dwight Howard is just fouled out of the game. And there's your answer to whether you stand your ground or go down. Theo Ratliff, second time he stands his ground in the post, coming across the middle of the floor, going to try and spin back. Ratliff in position, holds his ground as Howard tries to go back at him. Once you establish this position right here, this position is yours. Ratliff establishes, stays there, takes the elbow in the face, sends Howard to the bench with his sixth personal foul. Iguodala with under three to go. Miller for three. Yes! What hasn't Andre Miller done tonight? Hits the three. He's got 28 points, and the Sixers are down five. And no more worries about number 12. Let's see if Courtney Lee can hit a shot under these conditions, game-winning conditions. He's been on fire today and been left open. Can you make a shot, rookie, when it really counts? They go to Turkoglu against Williams. 6-10 against 6-2, and he stayed outside and rimmed the shot for Tott, the offensive rebound. Johnson over Ratliff, and he got it done. Offensive rebounds, second chance opportunities continue to hurt the 76ers after they play one good possession of defense. The Magic have come up with offensive rebounds that have turned into second chance points and enabled them to hang on to their lead. We have a timeout. The Sixers trailing by seven and two minutes and 22 seconds to play in the fourth quarter of this game two. Six seventy nine Orlando two minutes and 22 seconds to go in the fourth quarter Andre Godala and the 76ers would love nothing more than to take a commanding two nothing lead in this best of seven series taking both games here at Amway Arena the home floor of the Orlando Magic with exactly 311 to play in this fourth and final quarter Stan Van Gundy lost the services of Dwight Howard fouling out his team at the time leading by eight. Right now they're up seven. Here are the Sixers out of the timeout. Williams thinking three. There it is. And the rebound to Anthony Johnson. Sixers need some stops. They got him in game one. Young riding Lewis. Well, you were talking about Courtney Lee being a go-to guy, but with Turkoglu and Lewis on the floor, even though both have struggled, both are very capable in crunch time. No question, putting it on the floor, hitting a tough runner across the lane. Williams forced to give it up. Miller, another three. Rebound to Gortat. 
And if you're the Magic, you're going to manage a little bit of clock here. Ratliff way out on Turkaloo. Lewis encounters Ratliff. Gortat breaking it free. Iguodala runs it down. 119 to play. Young thinking three, trying to bust a move on Lewis. Need a rebound. It's Miller, an offensive rebound. Look at Andre Miller fighting the good fight. And a foul. His seventh rebound, the offensive rebound, his second. He has been marvelous and all over the floor tonight. If he hits two at the line, it'll give him 30 for the game. No quit in Andre Miller, no quit in the 76ers. Offensive rebound, then spin back, get the contact. Shot fake again, gets Johnson in the air, gets the contact. More importantly, stops the clock and gives the Sixers a chance to get two more points. Cut back into that lead. Dwight Howard fouling out of the game with 3.11 to go. His team ahead by eight at that point. It is eight right now with Royale Ivy coming in. Becomes an offense defense thing with Ivy and Lou Williams. This to put the Sixers down seven. Anthony Johnson on the floor here in the guts of the game for the Magic. In place of the starter, Ray Ferrals. Turkaloo measured by Iguodala, who stripped him in the basketball, but a foul. Iguodala on the steal, called for the foul, sending Turkaloo to the line. Let's see if Iguodala gets all ball here. Turkaloo trying to ride him off with that shoulder, and he gets all ball. Tough break for Iguodala. Turkaloo uses his shoulders as well as anyone off the dribble. Puts his right shoulder in, Iguodala tries to push him off. Iguodala gets all ball. But Turkaloo gets to the free throw line. Well, Tony DeLeo spent a long time near James Capers. Iguodala arguing his case as well, but Turkaloo, his 11th free throw. And the Magic get a huge break on what should have been an Andre Iguodala steal and Magic turnover. And now the Sixers are down nine with 53.6 to go. Sixers put up a great fight in this one, and it looked pretty good when number 12 there, Dwight Howard, fouled out of the game with 3-11 to play. And the likes of Lewis, Turkaloo, and with Anthony Johnson running the team off the bench, they have been able to keep the lead and, in fact, expand it by one as we take a look at our Land Rover extraordinary stat of the game. One of the things that can change, Mark, game to game, 76ers in game one turned the ball over 10 times, and the strategy has stayed the same in terms of Turkaloo and Lewis, and the Sixers have done a nice job against them, but when you turn the ball over 17 times, when you turn the ball over in the first half the way the 76ers did, you allow the Orlando Magic to let Turkaloo struggle, to let Lewis struggle, and stay in and build themselves a lead. Don't forget Game 3 Friday at 8 o'clock, Game 4 Sunday at 6.30. Come on out and cheer on the 76ers who will come home with the home court advantage no matter what. That's a young three, and down it goes for Thaddeus Young, who it's a huge three for the Sixers to make it a six-point game. One more chance to defend before you have to start fouling. Sixers need a stop. Miller draped on Johnson, who will use some clock. Nobody here with a foul to give. Turkaloo against Miller. Turkaloo at 6'10", stays outside and missed it. Rebound to Lewis, and he put it back. Offensive rebounding has killed the Sixers tonight. It's the 14th of the game for the Orlando match. Sixers have done a decent job defensively, but have given up offensive rebounds. Have done a decent job defensively, but have turned the ball over on the other end of the floor. And those two statistics, Mark, are the reason the 76ers are going to lose game two. 28.8 to go in this fourth and final quarter. Char Lewis, the offensive rebound, and put back moments ago. The poll question brought to you by AT&T and by a narrow margin. You picked last year's game one victory over Detroit as the biggest of the three upsets. 
narrowly beating the Sixers victory here on Sunday in that 1999 win against the Magic, a distant third. Thank you for voting tonight in the AT&T poll question. Iguodala sizing up Turkoglu, rimming the three and the rebound to Lee. And the Sixers forced to foul. We walk the floor here. The Sixers down eight and 22.9 to go. As you talked earlier about Courtney Lee and what could he do here in the fourth quarter, but the combination of Turkoglu and Lewis has been pretty potent, finally coming to life for them late in this game. 12 points for them in the fourth quarter. Last six points for the Magic have come from those two. But I can't wait for fight. I mean, picture the 76ers coming home and fans understanding how competitive they've been in this series, winning game one. And other than the offensive rebounds and the turnovers here in game two, an opportunity to go up 2-0. And certainly have given the Magic all they can handle. The Magic, I think, know now that they're in a series. Oh, absolutely. Tickets available by calling 215-339-7676. Or go to Sixers.com. Friday, the tip is at 8 o'clock. Sunday, the tip is at 6.30. And of course, if you can't make it out, you got your cover here on your home of the Sixers in high definition Comcast Sportsnet. Iguodala hitting the three. Andre Iguodala with 21 points, 20 of them here in the second half. And Young forced to foul Lewis here with the Sixers down seven, so he walked the floor. And Rashard Lewis at 84%. And five of six from the stripe tonight will go to the line. Well, the Sixers made yet another run. They were behind by as many as 18. They cut it to eight after three. And had the Magic running scared here in the fourth quarter, especially after Dwight Howard fouled out of the game. That came with 3.11 to go. The Sixers trailing by eight at that point. And amazingly, the Magic have been able to keep the Sixers at arm's length before Howard fouled out, dropped 11, pulled 10 boards, and had four blocks. Stuck a throat into, or stuck an elbow in the throat of Theo Ratliff. An offensive foul for him. That meant the night. Well, no so the Magic hitting their three throws here down the stretch, 11 to 13 here in the fourth. And they're a good free throw shooting team, and you expect them to do that. But the 76ers prepare for game three. I think they're satisfied with their half-court defense, but especially here in the second half. Ten offensive rebounds in the second half after getting stops against the Magic. The Magic have been able to offensive rebound the ball, give themselves second-chance opportunities, several of which turned into three-point baskets. This became a game in which Orlando got a fair amount of extra possessions in the first half because of six or turnovers and throughout a good part of the game with offensive rebounds. And coaches will often talk about those extra possessions as being key. They've gotten all five more field goal attempts. The Sixers in this game have made one more bucket. But also another interesting fact, Orlando with 30 free throws to only 18 for the Sixers. Well, Howard waits that average, no question. He's going to get himself to the line. They get all of the desperation heave, and that's going to do it. And this series is now even at one game apiece. Again, another terrific effort by the Sixers, who jumped off to that early seven-point advantage. Unable, however, to take advantage of the absence of Dwight Howard. Andre Miller, a marvelous game, albeit in defeat with 30 points. He set the tone early for the Sixers, and in fact, for a good part of the first half, it was Miller and Thaddeus Young calling a good part of the offensive load for the Sixers. Now, Sixers back home. Friday, and they will take on Orlando in game three. That will be an eight o'clock start. And then on Sunday, we'll have game four. That will be a 6.30 start. And now we are guaranteed a game five, no matter what happens in games three and four. And that will be Tuesday here in Orlando. And we'll have that game for you on Comcast Sportsnet as well. Final score tonight, the Magic over the Sixers, 96 to 87 as Orlando took an early second quarter lead. They would not relinquish and went on to not the series at a game apiece.
So we go back to Philadelphia. 76 is still with a home court advantage with the series tied at one after Orlando's win tonight. 76ers basketball has been brought to you by the new AT&T. Your world delivered. McDonald's McCafe coffees. Try hot or iced mochas, lattes, and cappuccinos. McDonald's, I'm loving it. Bud Light, the difference is drinkability. Wachovia, the official financial services partner of the Philadelphia 76ers. Mountain Dew, do the do. And by Toyota, a smart way to keep moving forward. Our Bud Light player of the game is rookie Courtney Lee, who had 18 in game one, ends up with 24 here in game two. He shoots 10 of 17. He had three steals as well. And he is our Bud Light player of the game tonight here at Amway Arena in Orlando. So the 76ers come back for game three. Don't forget, it's at 8 o'clock, game four, Sunday at 6.30, Friday and Sunday, respectively. 215-339-7676 for tickets, or go to Sixers.com. Come on out and cheer on the Sixers in games three and four. 76ers basketball produced by the man, Jared Quill, our director, Nick Marchetta for Dean Lanham and Bob Salmi. I'm Mark Sumov. Don't go anywhere. A great roster of activity coming up. Dodge presents Sixers Post Game Live up next.